now? Oh, yes. Okay, great. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Xiang Yu from the City University of Hong Kong. In this section, uh, we will talk about deep reinforcement, reinforcement learning for recommended system. So as Professor Tang and the Professor Fan just introduced before, we receive a lot of information every day from different platform. And the recommended system is a kind of way to help us to locate the information we want. So the task of recommendations is actually it want to suggest items that best match user's preference. So for a typical recommended system, we will do two things. So the first is we want to learn the user's preference from his profile. For example, your gender, your age, and your growth in history. And the second thing is according to user's preference, we want to suggest the items that can match the preference. So the second step is more about how to generate recommendations. So although there are many solutions for these two steps, uh, there are still some challenging problems about the recommendation policies. Uh, because we found that the most recommended system consider the recommendation procedure as an offline optimization and only focus on the short-term reward. For example, uh, in this case, when we use metric factorization, we can build a user model offline. And once the model is built, uh, it is fixed when we launch it online. So that's why it's an offline optimization. And the, once we found that the user may like this book, uh, we will immediately recommend this book. So we don't consider the long-term influence. Uh, but the following this way, actually there are some obvious disadvantages. So first, we will overlook the real-time feedback from users because once they learn the user model offline, uh, offline it is fixed when they launch it online. And the second challenge is that, as I just mentioned, typically they focus on the immediate reward. So basically we want to guarantee uh, once we recommend an item to a user, the user will be likely to buy it, but we don't consider the long-term influence on user experience. So what's the disadvantage of this policy is that you will get things more and more similar. Uh, for example, last year is the election time. One day I watched some debate between Biden and Trump. And the second day I got some recommendations of the debates. I feel excited because it's just the second day. So I gave some positive reward. But after a few days, I get more and more, and I feel really bored. So if you always follow this kind of, kind of short-term reward, you will get more and more similar recommendations. And eventually, there is no surprise at all. So why we want to introduce reinforcement learning for recommendations? So in reinforcement learning, there is an agent and the environment. So the agent will take some action and the environment will give some reward. And of course, because the reward, the state will change. So through the interaction with the environment, the agent can learn to take the, be take the best action to get the optimal long-term reward. So, okay, this is the basic idea of reinforcement learning. So basically, uh, there are three group of reinforcement learning methods. The first is the value-based method. It learns the value function of the, of the actions and then takes the action with the optimal value. So famous algorithm like Dyna, Q-learning, SASA, and the DQN belongs to the value-based method. And the second group is the policy-based method. It directly searches the policy space and learns the probabilities of taking the action and then sample the action according to the probabilities. So in policy-based so in policy -based method, uh, action with a small probability also have a chance to be sampled. And finally, actor critic, actor critic and the experience incorporate both the value-based and the policy-based RL method. The policy structure is known as the actor because it's used to select actions. And the estimate value function is known as the critic because it judges the action made by the actor. 
So these are the three uh, famous, uh, famous group of uh, methods of reinforcement learning. So when we introduce reinforcement learning for recommendations, it mainly has two advantages. The first, the recommendation policy will be updated continuously according to users' real-time feedback. For example, if you purchase an item, uh, we will give a positive reward to the system, and the system will reinforce this kind of recommendation policy. But if you skip the items, we will have a negative reward. So basically, uh, the system will try to avoid this kind of recommendation policy. So this is one advantage of reinforcement learning for recommendations. And the second advantage is actually when we use reinforcement learning, we consider more about the long-term reward. So for example, we recommend something to you, probably you will buy it and you will stop this session. There is no falling up. If, but if we recommend an iPhone to you, probably you will also buy the case, buy the charger and the earphone in this session. So when we use reinforcement learning, basically uh, we try to maximize this kind of long-term reward from users. So this is the outline of papers we will introduce. Uh, we have three groups, uh, RL for one, uh, sing, uh, single scenario recommendations, RL for multiple scenario recommendations, and the online environment simulator for uh, RL-based recommendations. And also, we will introduce two survey papers that summarize the RL for recommendations. Uh, so typically, the first group studies the user's sequential behavior in one type of scenario, such as uh, in the homepage of an um, uh, e-commerce uh, e platform, where the second group studied the user's uh, sequential behavior in multiple scenarios, such as the user's uh, behaviors in the home page and the shopping cart, uh, shopping cart page. And also the second group studied the sequential behaviors uh, with multiple type of items, such as the recommendations and the advertisement. So we will first introduce the papers of RL for single scenario recommendations. So since in RL, we consider the interaction between users and the systems. So let's look at how does the real, uh, real world interaction look at. So in a typical interaction, the recommender system will recommend a page of items to the user. You can just imagine in Amazon. And then the user will give feedback. He can click, he can purchase, and so on. And the recommended system will update its policy according to the feedback, and then recommend a new page of items, and so on, until the user terminates this session. So to capture this interaction, actually, there are several challenges. So the first one is since the user is continuously providing feedback, so that's why, actually, we need to update our policy according to the user's uh, real-time feedback. And the second thing is nowadays, uh, in a real-world recommend system, they typically recommend a page of items as a whole. So how can we recommend a page with diverse and uh, complementary items? So why we need a diverse and complementary page? Uh, because we try to increase the chance that the user will click or purchase on this page. For example, if we just provide a lot of cell phones in one page, I don't think this is a good way because actually most cell phones are exchangeable to each other. So that's why we need to provide the diverse and the complementary items. And also because each time we recommend a two dimensional page of items, this is different from the ranking in one, dimen one dimensional list. So the third challenge is how to put the items properly in the page. So this is more about how to display the items. So now the question is, can we address these three challenges by reinforcement learning at the same time? So then we propose the page-wide recommendation model. So before I present the details of the framework, I would like to, uh, to introduce the reinforcement learning architecture we use. So in this paper, we use the actor critic architecture. So different from traditional deep Q networks, uh, actor critic can handle the dynamic item space and it can reduce the training time. So in our page-wise recommendation, we use the actor critic uh, structure. So the next question is how can we design the actor and the critic? So I will introduce these two components in detail. 
So first, uh, we consider the design of the actor. So what's the goal of the actor? So actually, in this case, because we do page-wide recommendations, uh, the state is the previous page we have worked, and the action is a page of items we, we want to recommend. So basically, the goal of the actor is to generate a page of recommendations according to user's browsing history. So here is the structure of the actor. It contains two parts. One is the encoder. So basically, we input the previous pages we have done, and we output the embedding of current user's preference. And for the decoder, we input the user's preference, and we will predict the next page of items. So that's the two part of the actor. I will introduce layer by layer. So the input of the encoder are the information of items in a page. For each item, we have its identifier, which is unique for each item. And uh, we have the items category that we want to generate diverse items. And we also have the user's feedback because we want to capture user's interest in one page. And then we transform this information into embeddings and we concatenate these three embeddings as the item embedding as a whole. So this is the embedding layer. Uh, and then we replace, the, uh, we replace the item embedding at the original location in the page. And we get a two-dimensional matrix. So then the next question is, how to uh, learn the spatial pattern to put asset in a page. So we can find that the two dimensional page matrix is similar to an image. And we can also consider the item embedding values as the pixels. So we introduce a CN layer uh, to learn the spatial pattern of items within the page. And next we use a GRU with attention layer to capture user preference among different pages. And finally, the encoder will output the, embed, uh, the embedding of user's current preference. Uh, now we have introduced all details of the encoder. And for the decoder, uh, given the embedding vector of user's preference, we want to generate a page of items. Uh, it is also a matrix. So it aims to address two uh, tasks. One is to generate a set of items. And the second is to put the items properly in one page. So then the challenge is, can we uh, address these two tasks at the same time? So our solution uh, is using a deconvolutional neural network. So it is the inverse process of a standard CN does. So it can recover an image from the embedding vector. So that we can use the DCN to generate a page matrix from the embedding vector of user's preference. And by using DCN, the decoder can generate the next page of, uh, next page of items and learn to put the items in a page at the same time. So this is for the actor. So for the critic, it takes the user's preference and a page of items, and it aims to predict the Q values. So here, a higher Q value means the page of items can lead to a larger long-term reward. So according to the Billman equation, the evaluation of current Q value should be equal to the current reward plus the Q value of the next state action pair. So this is the page-wise recommendation paper. It can update uh, recommendation policy based on user's real-time feedback. It can optimize the long-term reward and then it can learn how to put items in a page. Uh, next, I will introduce the second paper, which considers the user's negative feedback into RL-based recommendations. So most existing recommend system consider more about the items that the user provide the positive feedback, such as click or purchase. Uh, and by learning this positive feedback, we can learn what user may like. So why we want to capture the negative feedback, like a user skip and uh, the leave behaviors. This is because the negative feedback show what a user may not like. And by incorporating the negative feedback, we can avoid the bad recommendation case, such as a recommend a skirt to a male, uh, to a male user. So however, uh, capturing the negative feedback is also quite challenging. So one is the number of negative feedback is much more than the positive ones, but we don't want the negative uh, feedback to bury the uh, positive ones. So another reason is 
the user's negative feedback may not be because user dislikes the items. Uh, that may because user don't pay attention or other reasons. So how to identify the items that the user really dislike is another challenge. And finally, uh, this weak or wrong feed negative feedback can introduce the uh, introduce noise into the system. So in this paper, we aim to solve these three challenges. So this paper first design a novel DQN uh, architecture. So the input layer and the first few layers of the network are separate to two parts. So one part is the positive state uh, that are learned from the recent click or ordered items and the action, uh, which is the potential item to recommend. And the, another part is the negative state that are learned from the recent skipped items. And uh, we also have the action uh, in, as the input. So the iteration of this design is to recommend an item that is similar to the item with the positive feedback, but uh, dissimilar to the items with the negative feedback. And uh, we uh, use RN with GRU to capture user's screenshot preference. Uh, and to handle the weak or wrong negative feedback, we found that the recommend system often recommend the uh, items belong to the same category, such as the cell phone, and the user click or, uh, or order a part of them and the skip others. So we propose a normal regularization term. It maximizes the difference between the Q values of two similar items, uh, but uh, they, they have different feedback, one positive and the other negative. So this partial order can help to identify the items user really don't like from the uh, uh, from the similar items. So uh, this is the second paper. It designed a novel DQN architecture and a regularization, a regularization term, which can efficiently capture users uh, positive and negative feedback for recommendations. Uh, and the third paper is a deep reference learning framework for the news recommendations. So uh, this paper also followed the classic uh, setting of RL-based recommendations and modeled the uh, recommendation as a uh, MDP. So here they define the environment is, uh, as the user pool and the news pool. And the agent is a recommendation algorithm. And the state is the features, uh, feature recommendation of the users. Uh, and the action is the feature recommendation of the news. And the, the, the reward is uh, user's feedback, which contains two parts. One is the uh, user behavior, the click uh, skip behaviors. And uh, another is the affirmation of user's activeness because they want to uh, keep the user uh, active uh, in the system. Uh, for the user's activeness, they use harder function to model it. For, uh, for instance, uh, as shown in the figure, uh, the user's activeness starts to decay from uh, time zero. Uh, and uh, at the time one, the user returns to the system and have some behaviors. And this results in an increase of the user's activities. And then uh, the users uh, return, uh, the user's activity continues to, uh, continues to decay after uh, T1. And the similar things happen and happen again. Uh, and also in this paper, uh, user feature and the, the contextual feature are used as the, uh, the state feature. Uh, but the uh, users, user news feature and the context feature are used as the action feature. So on one hand, the reward of taking action at a certain state is closely related to the all features. Uh, and on the other hand, they found that the reward that are determined by the character, uh, the uh, the characteristic of the user himself, such as whether the user is active. Uh, this is mainly influenced by the user and the, the context features only. So based on these observations, they use a dueling DQN and divide the Q function into the value function, VS, and the advantage function, ASA. So here, the value function is only de determined by the state feature and the advantage function is determined by both the state feature and the action feature. 
so another major novelty of this paper is it proposed a novel exploration uh, method. So the traditional exploration methods such as random exploration, it, it will harm the user preference in short term. Uh, but the uh, multi arm banded method have the same issue and they have large variance and they take a long time to convert. So this paper proposed an efficient exploration method. It has two network, the current network Q and the explorer network Q2. Uh, and the training step is uh, first, uh, they get recommendations from Q and Q2. And uh, then they uh, probabilistic interleave these two lists. And the next, they get feedback from users and uh, compare the performance of these two network. So if uh, Q2 the performance better, uh, and then we will update Q to work to it. Uh, but uh, if the uh, uh, if uh, Q2 the performance uh, performs worse, uh, the agent will keep uh, the network Q unchanged. So through this kind of operation, the agent can do more uh, effective evaluation without losing the recommendation quality. So this is the DR paper for news recommendations. So that's the papers of recommendations in the single scenario. Uh, next, I will introduce the paper of recommendations in multiple scenario. Uh, so in the real world recommend system, user often sequentially interacts with multiple scenario in one recommendation session, and the different scenario has different objective. For example, a user usually start a recommendation session by browsing the items in the entrance page, so which suggests diverse and complementary items to match user's various preference. And in this page, user can skip the recommended item and continue browsing the new recommendations. And then he can go to the item detail free page if she click one, prefer, one preferred items. And the uh, item detail page shows more details of the clicked item. And the agent in this page generate a set of recommendations related to this clicked item for user to compare with. So the user can go to uh, can go back to the uh, entrance page or go to the another item detail page if she clicks one item or add the clicked item in the shopping cart and go to the shopping cart page. And then in the shopping cart page or even after user purchase some items, there still exists some recommendations in each page. So in, uh, from this example, we, we can find that there is a chain of sequentially related scenarios and the recommendations in different scenarios have a different uh, objective. So that's optimizing only one recommended agent for all the scenarios will overlook these different objectives. So another solution is separately optimize each recommended agent for each scenario. But however, uh, this design also leads to the suboptimal performance. So there are three reasons. The first is it will ignore the sequential dependency of user's behaviors in different scenarios. And the second is optimizing each agent for each scenario, it will only use the user behavior data, data in this scenario, but ignore the data from others. And the third reason is a separate optimization of one scenario will only optimize its own objective, uh, which may negatively influence, influence the overall performance of the whole recommendation session. So that's the three reasons. Uh, to address these challenges, we formulate the recommendation task uh, in sequential scenario as a whole chain recommendation problems and the leverage multi-agent reinforcement learning to jointly optimize all the recommendation agents. The, each individual actor is the recommend, uh, recommend, recommend agent in one scenario and the global critic control all the actors and uh, enable them to work collaboratively to optimize the overall performance. So in our framework, uh, agents are sequentially activated 
uh, to capture users' behavior in different uh, scenarios. And uh, the agent shares the memory uh, of the whole user behavior data. And uh, all agents work collaboratively uh, to optimize the overall performance of the whole recommendation session. So in this paper, uh, we use off policy method to optimize our framework based on the offline user behavior data. For example, a user in the interest page, when the agent of this page recommend an item, the user may take three types of behaviors. First, uh, she can click the item and the agent of the interest page will continue to generate the next recommendation. So this will lead to a non-zero Q value. And the second, if she clicks the recommended item, the agent of the insurance page will receive a positive reward. And the user will go to the item detail page. And then the agent in the item detail page will uh, generate the, recommend, uh, the next recommendation. Uh, and this will lead to a non-zero Q value. And the third, uh, if, you, uh, if the user leaves the platform, the agent of the insurance page will only receive a negative reward. So this is a three type of actions. And uh, we have similar analysis, uh, analysis for the other scenarios. Uh, also in our framework, we use model-based reinforcement learning to activate the user behavior, uh, which can reduce the reinforcement learning of training data, uh, of training data uh, number and uh, perform more accurate optimization of the Q function. So uh, this is a deep chain uh, model, and uh, it can capture users' sequential behavior in different scenarios and uh, uh, optimize the overall performance of the whole recommendation session. And next, uh, I will briefly introduce another similar RL model for the multi scenario recommendation. So this model also has a, a global critical network to evaluate the overall rewards. And it has a communication modular to generate messages that are shared among the actors. And this message encodes the historical behavior, uh, observations and the actions, and can be used to represent the global state of the environment. Uh, and each actor network represents an agent, which receives its own local observations and a communication message, and make private actions. So this is the detailed structure. So the global critical network estimates the Q function, uh, which indicates the future reward when taking action up on the message H uh, T minus one and the observation uh, OT. And the actor, uh, the actor network output a, a deterministic action uh, with the given message and the local observations as the input. Uh, and the message are updated by a communication component. Uh, it takes the observation OT and the action AT as input. So this is the uh, second uh, similar RL model for the multi scenario recommendations. Uh, and next, we will introduce the scenario where user interacts with both the recommendations and the advertisement. Uh, so in a real world recommend system, besides the normal recommendations, we also have advertisement, uh, such as in Amazon, we have a sponsored product. So if we show this product to the users, the advertisers will pay for this advertising impression. So the goal of the online advertising is to maximize the revenue from the advertisers. So to achieve this goal, uh, we should assign the right advertisement to the right user at the right place. So some effort has been made to develop a reinforcement learning based uh, online advertising um, policies. Uh, however, most existing RL, uh, RL models, they only focus on maximizing the advertising revenue, but they ignore the user, uh, their negative influence on user's appearance. But actually in a typical recommend system, the recommendations and the advertisement are optimized by two teams. They have different goals, they use different models. So it usually has suboptimal overall performance. For example, for example, if we display too much advertisement, we can have a higher advertising revenue, but the user will be mad because they have bad experience. 
But on the contrary, if we show fewer advertisement, the advertising revenue will go down. Uh, so my research tried to design new methods to jointly optimize the advertising revenue and the user experience. Uh, for example, in the KDD paper, we built a two-level reference learning framework to jointly optimize the overall performance of the recommendation system and the advertising system. So the first level is a recommend system. Upon a user's request, the recommend system captures user's preference from the historical data, uh, historical behavior, and uh, generate a list of recommendations that best match user's preference. Uh, so the recommended system aims to optimize the long-term user experience or the user engagement. So the main challenge is that it needs to select a subset of items from the large item space, which has a high uh, computational cost. So we, uh, to address this challenge, we leave a cascading deep queue network for the recommend systems. We generate a list of recommendations by sequentially selecting items in a cascading manner. So the cascading DQN can reduce the uh, com combinational complexity of selecting a subset of items from the large item space to the complexity of uh, K times uh, N, uh, here, the N is the number of candidate items, and the key is the length of recommendation list. And the second level is an uh, advertising system. So it inserts advertisement into the given recommendation list, and it needs to make three decisions. First, uh, whether to insert an, adver uh, an advertisement into the current uh, recommendation list. And if yes, it also needs to decide which advertisement and where to insert. So the goal of advertising revenue is trying to maximize the advertising revenue from the advertisers and minimize the negative influence of the advertisement on the user experience. So to make these three decisions, we propose a novel DQN architecture. So the input is a state action pair where the state include the historical recommendations and the advertisement and the contextual information and the recommendation list generated by the recommend system. And the action is the embedding of an advertisement which represents the decision three. And, and the output of the DQN are the Q values of this advertisement of all locations. And uh, then we can select the maximum one. So we should solve the decision two the optimal location. And uh, to solve the first task, uh, we add a special unit at the uh, output layer, uh, which is a Q value of not inserting an advertisement into the uh, recommendation list. So when this Q value is the maximum Q value, we will not insert an advertisement. So this framework can simultaneously make these three decisions. And finally, the target user will browse the mix, the list, and provides the feedback. And according to the feedback, the recommended system and the advertising system will update their policy and generate the, uh, the, uh, the list for the next user request. So the, the advantage of this paper is uh, compare with the two common uh, traditional DQN architectures, uh, they can only uh, evaluate the Q values for one level of actions. But our model is the first individual DQN architecture can evaluate the Q values of multiple uh, level of actions simultaneously, such as the location and the, 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 the optimal advertisement, these two levels. So also it's worth noting that compared with the classical DQN in figure B, uh, it requires uh, A times L uh, forward propagations our uh, architecture only needs eight, uh, eight times. So our model has also, uh, also has the better training efficiency. Uh, so these are the papers of RL uh, recommendations in multiple scenarios. Uh, next, uh, we will uh, introduce the online environment simulator for RL-based recommendations. So as I just mentioned, uh, RL-based recommendation models are highly depends on users' real-time feedback. 
So the most typical way is the online A-B test. So in this way, a new recommendation algorithm is trained based on the feedback from real users. And then its performance is compared with the current recommendation model working online. So however, we think the online A-B test is inefficient and expensive. And there are three reasons. First, uh, it usually takes several weeks to collect sufficient data. And the second, uh, the second reason is actually a lot of engineering effort are necessary to deploy the new algorithm online. And finally, uh, online A-B tests often lead to bad user experience because when we deploy a new model online, its parameters are randomly initialized. So because of these three reasons, uh, we cannot quickly train, uh, and train and test a new RL-based recommendation model uh, based on the online A-B test. So uh, in this work, we build a user simulator based on users' historical data, and it can generate real-time feedback like real users. And then we can use this generated feedback to pre-train and evaluate a new recommendation algorithms before we launch them online. Uh, so however, simulating the user's real-time feedback is a challenging task. Uh, one is actually the underlying distribu distribution of item sequence is quite complex in the historical data. So this is because of the large amount of items in the practical recommend system. And the second challenge is actually to learn a robust simulator. We need a lot of historical data for each user. But in the real world recommend system, the data available to each user is usually uh, very sparse and limited. Uh, so to tackle these two challenges, we propose a user simulator up on the GAN framework. So here the generator aims to learn the item distribution from users' historical data and then generate fake items that are similar to the real ones. And the discriminator wants to distinguish real and fake items and at the same time, it aims to predict the type of user's real-time feedback on the items. So in the following, uh, I will introduce the details of the generator and the discriminator. Uh, so to optimize the discriminator, we have the supervised and the unsupervised losses. So the unsupervised losses is similar to a classical GAN model. So it aims to distinguish the real and the fake items. So here, the probability of an item uh, is classified as real. It's the summation of the probabilities of key real feedback, key real feedback in the uh, red color. Uh, and, uh, and also it's similar for the uh, fake items uh, in the orange color. Uh, and then the supervised loss is compute like the standard uh, uh, GAN model. So besides the unsupervised loss, we also have the supervised loss. It aims to predict the type of user's feedback. So here we consider it as a classification problem and the use cross entropy loss to minimize the uh, difference between the user's ground truth feedback and the prediction feedback. So here we uh, apply the cross entropy loss to the real, uh, uh, real feedback and the fake feedback separately. Uh, and finally, the overall loss function of the discriminator is a weighted sum of the supervised and the unsupervised parts. So, okay, this is the loss of the discriminator. So for the generator, we also have the supervised and the unsupervised part. So the unsupervised loss is similar to a classical GAN model. It minimizes that, uh, it minimizes that the probabilities that uh, a generated item is classified as the fake items. And the supervised loss aim to minimize the dis uh, distance between the real item from data and the generated item from the generator. So this can help to generate items that are similar to the real ones. And finally, we weighted sum the supervised and the unsupervised part as the overall loss function of the generator. So this is the loss function of the generator. And uh, then to optimize the whole framework, we can alternately update the loss of the discriminator and the generator. So to validate the performance of our user simulator model, we study the performance of training reinforcement learning recommend system based on our simulator. And we use uh, total reward of our session as metric to evaluate the model training. 
So we have two baselines. One is directly training or reinforcement, uh, uh, reinforcement learning recommended system based on the historical data. And another is training the system up on IREC GAN, which, uh, which is a strong baseline in, the simulate, in simulating users. And uh, we can find that all models converge to the similar reward with the one up on historical data. And our model is more stable than the model up on the IREC GAN. So this observation means that all model can take place uh, of the real users to train the RL-based recommended systems. Uh, also, uh, be, besides our model, there are also some existing user simulation models, such as uh, Rexim from Google, which used the dynamic based network, and the Reco gene from Critio, which used the banded model, and the GAN PW and the virtual Taobao from Alibaba, which, use, uh, which are based on the imitation learning. So please refer to their papers for more details. Uh, and finally, there are two survey papers to summarize the fundamental and the recent advance of reinforcement learning for recommendations. So one is our survey paper, Deep Reinforcement Learning for Search Recommendation and uh, Online Advertising. It is published in 2019. So in this survey, we group papers based on their applications. For example, in RL for recommendations, we study the uh, uh, exploit exploitation and the exploitation problem the user's dynamic preference modeling, the long-term user engagement, and the snake recommendation problems. Uh, and our survey also summarizes the important problems in RL for search and the RL for online advertising. And the second survey paper is the reinforcement learning based recommended system, uh, which is uploaded to ACAV this year. So their reference paper are grouped based on the RL methodologies, such as the uh, Q-learning method for recommendations. Reinforcement learning method, uh, reinforcement method, uh, actor critical method, and the compound method for recommendations. So these are the two survey papers. Please refer to them according to your preference. Uh, so in, uh, in conclusion, uh, RL based recommendations have two advantages. First, the recommendation policy will be updated uh, continuously according to users' real time feedback. Uh, and second, uh, the, the second advantage is actually when we use reinforcement learning, we consider more about the long-term reward. So that's all for this session about the reinforcement learning based recommended system. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we will have a break and uh, we will come back at uh, 9.40, right?